It was a long and arduous night for me, and I only had one person to thank for that, and that in this case was myself, of course. You see, when it comes to painting terrains and all that, I know I've described it as tedious work priorly, and honestly it is. It is tedious work, but it is also work that is very necessary for actually conveying true meaning and true feeling and true storytelling within your world. You see, what made today's uh, what made today's progress so long and arduous is that I had left it unfinished for a lot of the water work from the last episode. And so yeah, today we are going to be completing that today. If you are just joining me and uh, just getting to know this channel, my name is Michael and this is Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share some of my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. And yes, we are going to just kick off this episode in the beginning with just some painting of the terrains there. Some very necessary painting of the terrains. And we are indeed in Sim City. Now, I know you probably won't be able to recognize it just because of how much of a close-up I'm giving it, but that is the case here. So firstly, I want to give a little hot tip here for those of you that are working in Create a World uh, on your own worlds. And that is that uh, when it came to painting underneath the water here, I actually decided to leave the grid on. And uh, it's called the Snap to Grid mode. It's just an emoji there on the, uh, the ribbon bar uh, that you can see at the top in the Create a World tool. And what makes it so useful and a uh, reason why I'm giving it out as a hot tip is it was able to help me depict like what was um, what was actually underwater and what was at the shore you see there's a lot of land that just uh, gradually uh, dips down into like underwater and I don't mind having like a tiny bit of grass showing underwater but when there's a lot I just want to paint it with that blue texture uh, that I've been using throughout the entire map now maybe this would have been an opportunity to experiment with a different underwater texture but I just like how this one looks so much and I'm actually going to make that call to switch to a different water texture at a later time like after I've uh, done the water detailing because I have a feeling that once I actually get into the water detailing that it's going to make a lot more sense like for the more narrower ravines and the streams and all that so that is certainly on the horizon there <laughs> and I keep mentioning that these detailing episodes are on the horizon and I really do mean it and I don't mean to drum up a lot of excitement for these detailing episodes because I don't honestly know how they're going to turn out I mean I'll film it anyways and show it to you guys but um I don't know how well you know yeah, I, I don't know how much detail in I'm that, it, that I'm actually going to contribute in it. Um, and I don't mean to like set myself up for disappointment or set you guys up to be disappointed with that part of this series, but I am kind of like running a little low on like different ideas. And the first place that I'm going to, like the one thing that I want to prioritize is storytelling. So if there's like a rockier shore, for example, I want to know why the rocks are there or something of the sort and um and yeah that was kind of my choice with like choosing specific spots here to uh paint the white sand uh beach texture from sunlit tides on is because i interpreted it as being just geographically available to actually have like a sandy beach whereas everything else would just be like grass or cliff meeting water so um, that's the kind of storytelling I am indeed talking about there. And, um, and yeah, when it comes to painting the, uh, the water texture, like a different texture for ravines, I will make that judgment after I've actually done some of the detailing with the water work, because with the water work, all of the detailing that needs to be done with the water is essentially, I just need to double check that all of the appropriate parts are indeed underwater that I want to be underwater. And also, um, I need to adjust like the different uh, depth levels for the middle of it or like yeah, I need to adjust the depth levels, which is just like lowering or raising the terrain at certain spots without it submerging. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's um, and then like what I find with this texture is that it responds very well to like lowering and raising your uh, your terrain heights underwater. Like it makes it very bright when it gets much closer to the surface, and then it makes it very dark as you actually. Uh, um, as you actually dig it out and all that. So I'm going to be using that to really uh, 
to help me make a judgment call on whether I want to paint the ravines a different color or not. And um, and yeah, I won't be able to make that judgment call until that uh, detailing is done. So yeah, that is um, like the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to detail up the ocean. I'm going to tell you guys that right now because I won't want to place any diving lots until that until those parts of the ocean are actually detailed. And then that way, um, however, however, what form the diving lots take place and whether I have to commission somebody to make them or if I can just import them directly from the uh, <laughs> from the island paradise world or not is yet to be determined, but I kind of need the um, I kind of need the ocean detailed before I can just drop a lot in the middle of the ocean. So that's something I need to do. All right, that's enough ocean talk here. For the goal of today's episode, we are looking at actually finalizing the rest of this national highway system. Um, and I actually end up placing the last lots of my create a world here. So uh, that is also super exciting because I won't have to worry about placing any more lots. And as I say that out loud, I realize I still need to put in some diving lots. So I take that back. <laughs> the only lots I'll have to place after this are indeed going going to be the diving lots or what could be used as diving lots and I am very um I'm very excited about that because I finally have like a solid uh, lot count, which I will reveal at the end of today's episode. So stay tuned for that along with your tours. So, and it's quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of lots on here and it's going to grow by like maybe three or four more. Anyways, um, the goal with well, the idea with placing the lots down here, like running up almost adjacent to the coast here is that the idea there is that those are going to be like farmhouse lots. So for players that enjoy uh, using like that enjoy rural play and that enjoy the um, what do you call it? the country living and country core stuff and horseback riding and all that, like this is going to be the area that you guys will likely be kind of hanging out in like the lots that i'm placing down are 64 by 64 lots so these are actually large farm lots that you can use you can live off the your own land your own uh, growing and all that and i think i place about like a four or five lot no it's a two four six lots six lots are placed in there um i hope i counted that right <laughs> if not um <laughs> drop a comment below and correct me on my elementary math skills but yeah i wanted to give quite a bit of opportunities there because i figured that um I figured that people would be really interested in farm play and all that. So I wanted to make sure that it was available here. And I'm kind of staggering my workflow here just because I need to adjust the geography where I need to and also figure out the lot sizes and how the national road is going to in interact with it. And the thing with these farm lots is that I wanted them staggered a little bit because I'm going to surround them with like a, a tree border. A border of trees there and I'm probably going to end up using the same trees that I use for the graveyard since I really like that look and I'm also going to border the coast as well with trees because I don't want the farms to be right up against like what you could use as a beach I hope that makes sense um, I want the farms uh, the farmhouse lots to actually feel like they're in the middle of fields and there's no access to a really awesome uh, river <laughs> and that the river is actually just like a cliff into the water there <laughs> so that was kind of my idea there and um, and I think I will end up executing well on it unfortunately this episode I don't actually get into doing any of the tree work that's going to be for the next episode and I promise you that because the trees will help make it come alive and at this point like I haven't even filmed that part of uh, the series yet so at the time I'm recording this episode the next episode has not been recorded as of yet so that's going to be exciting I'm excited to record that one and uh, and yeah I really wanted the rural gameplay here to feel like you're in the middle of fields and that you can take your horse out and all of that and you'll see um, as we go further along in the episode how I do uh, try to convey that with the road work. So yeah, the farmhouses are staggered and I give them quite a bit of space in between each other. But the three lots that you see on that hillside there, I am intending for those to be uh, nectaries and, or vineyards or wineries, however you want to call them in your game is fine with me. But I'm intending to make mine into nectaries. And my idea there is that some of the more elite families are actually going to be competing with each other in the wine business. And I wanted that vineyard on a slope uh, look 
and I kind of want that look as you are driving through the national road. So you have vineyards on the left and then some of those farm uh, farmhouses with their tree lined borders on the right. And um, I don't know if I want to change some of the terrains to make it more uh, farm like. I don't know how it's going to mix with this terrain, but if I can get away with not doing that, then that would be also perfect too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can also fake it as well. Like I can always just like paint a couple of straight strips of uh, dirt and whatnot. So there's a way to fake it if I really, really feel inspired to do that. And I might when it comes to uh, detailing and that will be like some of the detailing work that I would consider in the detailing portion of this series. <clears throat> I also um, needed to figure out how the road layout here is going to interact for the entrance into Magic Town. And, um, and so that's part of what I'm doing on screen here is just trying to snake that national road throughout the entire um, throughout the entire Belladonna Valley region here up until the northern end where it will terminate at the uh, at the big popular beach site <laughs> that everybody from town goes to visit. And there will also be a resort there as well. And I think I might have misspoke in one of the previous episodes about resorts and that you had to put that big uh, commercial tower down. Well, I was 100% wrong after doing more research into that. And I was probably uh, corrected in the comments section as well. But um, you do have to put in a rabbit hole uh, building, but it doesn't have to be that commercial tower, which is such a relief because that commercial tower was just ugly and I was gonna try and uh, hide the resort lot in like the side of a mountain while also fronting the beach but you needed a road so I don't know how that would have worked out but um, I'm so glad that I'm not put into that kind of a predicament because it would have changed the geography significantly and I really like Belladonna Valley looking the way it is now I think that with its gently rolling hills to the north and then its more mountainous region uh, to the south. It looks quite beautiful and it complements the Three Lakes Mountain region very well, as well as the rest of the city too. So I was quite relieved that I didn't have to do any extra ge uh, geographical work because I really liked the way it was looking then. And so I just kind of did a little more research and discovered that I was wrong and I was very happy to be wrong when I discovered it. <laughs> As you can tell, like I don't play a lot with resorts, but again, I want to put like a nice beach resort towards the north in Belladonna uh, Valley on that northern beach area for that, you know, tropical resort that people like to play with. And then also that mountain resort in the Three Lakes region. So then you get like the best of both worlds in that case. And that Sins from the city can actually do like, I guess, technically it would be a vacation because you're leaving the city, but it would be more like a staycation. I don't know. I'll leave that uh, debate to the comment section there. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can still like vacation with your families within this world if World Adventures is not your cup of tea and the resorts are. I finished this episode up by finishing the road work in the Magic Town area. And you can tell it's Magic Town area because the terrain is a different color indeed. And what players will find in the Magic Town area is the Equestrian Center and also the World of Wonder lot from the um, from the Sims 3 store. And I'm also going to throw in a greenhouse here as well. And, you know, uh, part of the lore here is just that this is Magic Town as it is in 2023. I mean, The Sims 1 was released in the early 2000s. So this is kind of like 20 years later. And I think that one thing that would remain uh, that would remain constant there is just the um, just all of the carnival stuff. And so I did contemplate at one point putting the seasonal lot here, but then I went against it just because I wanted it in Old Town more than here. And the idea actually is that um, Magic Town isn't doing so well. And um, it's kind of, it's going to have um, the equestrian center there, which brings in some attention. And then the uh, World of Wonder lot is something I'm going to have to redo as a live show venue. And I'm more than happy to do that. But it's kind of like the Magic Town like carnival is sort of 
moving to Old Town. And we'll see that in the lore when I actually do the lots and all that. So it's an area in transition. However, um, it still has some things going on with it. I mean, with the greenhouse lot, I also plan to drop in the fortune teller uh, van there. Uh, so there is certainly that opportunity there as well. So it's got like some of these cute uh, quirks and all that and you'll see me place some really narrow lots in here as well and that's actually to depict that there is a trailer park in uh, Magic Town so with um, with Magic Town kind of breaking down and moving on and uh, changing locations what's being put in its place is actually a trailer park and uh, <laughs> it would also make sense as well for the carnies that need to live uh, near the carnival it, like I don't mean to stereotype there, but um, I imagine like I'm thinking back in the 50s and the 40s, like with those carnivals and then having, you know, some caravans and some trailers like nearby where the entertainers would actually live in so that they can perform at the uh, at their carnival and whatnot as a carny. So that was kind of the idea here is that there would be a trailer park to really uh, depict that kind of gameplay. And it also gives players an option as well. Uh, another um, another starter neighborhood option if they don't want to start out in the middle of Sin City there, in the starter neighborhood there. So there's this option here starting in the trailer park. I actually really love the trailer park lot in The Sims 2 Apartments. That was one of my favorite lots ever. And, uh, and so yeah, I'm very excited to kind of bring, bring that gameplay here. And I felt that it would be very well suited to the um, Magic Town neighborhood of Belladonna Valley. So. So yeah, very excited for that, uh, for those lots to finally come on live and uh, to come alive, really. Anyways, that is going to about do it for this episode. If we aren't already in the tours, then please feel free to stick around for the tours at the end of the episode here. It, it's starting to look spectacular now that all the base texture paints are done. And yeah, I just want to take a moment here to say thank you so much for watching. And if you've enjoyed uh, this series and this episode, then feel free to give a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.